Hey guys, this is Agent Mindstorm, and welcome to Ocarina Craft. This, I just realized I have Ken Fly on. This is an adventure map that I created in a span of many, many years. And this is technically part of the Total Tour series, but we're going to spend so many videos in this world that I'm counting it as its own thing. We're also back on Xbox One, which means that I'm going to be using my older microphone, so the audio might sound a little different than normal, but no worries, it's still fine, it's still me, and it's still a recent video. This is not an old video that I'm uploading, this is coming out right after the Glow Squid video, or whatever was after that. So, what is this world? This world is a recreation of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Wait, Agent Mindstorm, don't you mean Kokiri Forest from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time? No. I mean The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The whole game. In fact, it is all playable here as a whole adventure map. I built the entire game. I, I was a big fan of it, if you can't tell. And uh, you start in Link's house, most predictably. In the starting chest, there are two books. We're going to quickly go through storyline. We don't need to worry about rule book though, because I already read it and made sure everything was set correctly. It's just like game rules and don't break blocks and stuff. And this is storyline. An evil wizard name. Okay. I need to preface this, all of this stuff was from the way I wrote, like, five, six years ago. This is not the way I would write today. <laughs> I am better at writing now. Just thought I should say that. An evil wizard named Ganondorf has been trying to steal an ancient magical item called the Triforce. The Triforce is currently being kept hidden away inside Hyrule Castle. It gives almost unimaginable power to he who wields it. He. This is why you must stop Ganondorf. If he gets it, he will try to take over all of Hyrule. You should head to Hyrule Castle and see Princess Zelda. First, you must find a way to leave your hometown. Kokiri Village. Maybe the Great Deku Tree could help you. And if we scroll to page 50, the book judges me. That's great. So that's the storyline, basically, if you've never played Zelda Ocarina of Time. It's just, it gets you up to date on the plot, which you would learn in the opening cutscene of Ocarina of Time, which, for obvious reasons, I can't do here. I've also got aim full map of the world provided to you because you have a map in the game, so I might as well give one to you. We don't really need to have that out all the time, though, because I know the world very well. And we have the Kokiri armor, which is just mending, unbreaking armor that is green, because you are Kokiri. And you get a bunch of steak. So let's explore Kokiri Village. Now, if you've played Ocarina of Time, you'll actually know what you're supposed to do here, but I'm pretending that I haven't, so we're just gonna explore. And meanwhile, there are a lot of things in this world that I'm gonna have to explain. So, rupees are in this, which is the currency used in Zelda, and this house actually has a few of them, so we've got blue rupees. This is my favorite one because the prismarine with the natural texture pack just looks exactly like a rupee, seriously. In this chest, we've got a normal rupee, which is an emerald, also kind of looks like the rupees in the game, but not as much as the prismarine crystal or whatever that is. And all of these chests just have different rupees, but the weird thing about the way that I did rupees in this map is it's not just the rupees from Ocarina of Time, because I also played Wind Waker around the same time, and I also added the ones from Wind Waker that aren't in the normal Ocarina of Time, like silver rupees and orange rupees, and you can never actually get that in this game. At least, I'm pretty sure I might be wrong, but you certainly can in Wind Waker, and if you're really confused about the values, I actually do have a book inside this place, it's kind of hard to find, but you can take it, and it explains the rupees. There you are, green, blue, yellow, red, purple, orange, silver, gold. Now I have them all memorized because I built this map, of course I would have them memorized, but if you don't, that will help you. And here is an orange rupee, which, okay, I just said I had them memorized, this should be worth 100, right? Right? Yes, okay. Because I couldn't remember if orange was 100 or purple was 100, but purple was 50, so I knew that orange had to be 100. I thought I would sleep and turn it to day because it was getting pretty dark already and you need to actually be able to see the map. Now, the one thing you may notice is that the map is very sparsely decorated. There's a few circles of rocks, there's a few random inclines in the ground, there's a few bushes, but for the most part, there really is nothing around here that looks that good and the whole world is walled in by dirt. <laughs> so it's not the most scenic adventure map, but you'll actually see later that I was attempting to make that better, and the better I got at building over time, the better it actually looks. So different parts of the map look different amounts of good. This was the very first thing I built, of course, so this is going to look the worst. Over here, 
we have the exit to the village, which is, I'll die out there, so you can't go out there yet. You're, there's signs, but you can't read them. And that's typical adventure map stuff. Now, I was big into watching Minecraft adventure maps on YouTube, so I pr basically copied the way they did stuff. And I honestly think this map is really good. I wish I could have uploaded it, but I didn't know that you couldn't upload maps once you put them on Xbox One until it was too late. And now that you actually can upload maps from Xbox One, you have to do it through Bedrock Edition. And I'm not a big fan of Bedrock Edition, so it's just kind of been lost to time until now, which is why we're doing a total tour on it. Lost Woods. Now, the Lost Woods is my single favorite part of this map, but unfortunately you can't get there until you beat the first dungeon. I stop you, because if you could, then you would go to the wrong dungeon first and be way, way below proper level for what you're supposed to be doing. So this in here is the part where you get the sword. It's just a little maze, and then you found the Kokiri Blade. That's what it is. It's a stone sword, I think? It's either stone or iron. It's the most basic sword, and everything in this map, if you can't tell already, has unbreaking and mending on it, because... I don't want your stuff to break, basically. In Zelda, your stuff doesn't break. <laughs> Breath of the Wild. But, for the most part, it doesn't break. Uh, this thing that says, don't ruin this, that's to tell new players not to jump on this farmland, because later you'll actually be able to plant something. If you've played Ocarina of Time, there's something called o um, magic beans, and you can plant magic beans, and then when you go forward in time, spoiler alert, they will be grown into plants. So that's what I'm trying to replicate here. Now, what this would be is a melon and then a melon grows here, and then you can get up the vines. Isn't that so clever? I thought that's clever. What does this say? You don't have a shield! Oh yeah, because this map was made back when I have... Okay, um, I... As Minecraft got updates, I kept going back to this map and revising it with new features, which is why we'll see stuff like Guardians, even though when I started building this map, Guardians were, like, barely even added to Java Edition. So, stuff like this wall that says you don't have a shield, I had done that in preparation for when they would add shields to Xbox One Edition. Little did I know, <laughs> Xbox One Edition would never get shields, because, you know, that's kind of what they did. So you just have to hop over this wall. Thankfully, I wasn't very good at stopping you. And this goes to the first dungeon. Now, look at- I actually built up the walls here. This is something I did later. You can tell because it looks like actual terrain and not just a straight-up wall. And look, guys! It's the Great Deku Tree. <laughs> it's a giant tree with a frowny face and sad eyes, and it looks really cool, okay? This is... Do you know how I did that part up there that looks like an actual tree? I grew giant oak trees, because you can use a piece of string to make them always giant, and I would grow them. They look like actual leaves. So hello there, young child of the forest. I am in desperate need of your help. I was cursed by a sorcerer from the desert, who is Ganondorf and K- Oh! They ruined it! You stupid zombies, you ruined the cool reveal! Look what you've done! Okay, so, in case you just missed what happened, in Ocarina of Time, when you go to the first dungeon, the tree opens his mouth. And what I do in this map to replicate that is, I have a little slime block contraption that opens when you step on this tripwire. So it opens the slime blocks, and it's like he opened his mouth, but of course... The, the zombie just had to ruin it. I am filled with spiders and will not live much longer if something is not done. Step inside me and destroy the spiders. You will be rewarded. Now, something very interesting that I found about the way I write in this map is it's very similar to how Mario Galaxy is written. And wouldn't you know, Mario Galaxy was a game that I played to absolute death when I was around the age where I made this map. So, of course, my writing was going to be influenced by it, it uses very similar wording and structure, just, you know, not quite as well done, because little kids aren't that good at it. I think I just remembered something that I was supposed to be doing, which is to have peaceful off until the first area. I mean, mob spawning off until the first area is complete, because this map has a huge problem with as soon as you um, spawn too many mobs in, the traps in the dungeons don't work anymore, because console edition has a very strict mob cap. So this is supposed to be spawning spiders, or something. Wait, why is this a furnace? Wait, never mind, I'm just wrong. Anyway, spiders are supposed to be spawning in here, but you can't see any of them because there are too many mobs. So, here we are, <laughs> inside the Great Deku Tree, the first dungeon. And this puzzle is kind of similar. Now, in Ocarina of Time, what you have to do here is you get the slingshot, and then you jump down and charge and jump into this. Now, in Minecraft, leaves don't break when you jump on them. So, I have an alternate solution. You go up here, 
and this is actually semi-difficult parkour. This map has a lot of parkour in it. This was when parkour was a big thing in adventure maps. And here we have a battle. Let's see if it actually works. Nope. See, that was supposed to spawn some enemies right there. Let's see if I can get it to do it. Alright, let's try again. It's still not working. It could just be that the redstone is broken at this point. At this point, I'm... I don't care anymore. I've tried three times now to get it to work, and it's still not working, so... You get the leaf cutters, which is what they're called. I did a lot of naming things in this map to show you what they do. I also got the fairy bow. Now, normally you get a slingshot in Ocarina of Time. There aren't slingshots in Minecraft, though. So, you get a bow. I would probably give you a crossbow if this was Minecraft. But here, with the fairy bow and the leaf cutters, we can now venture into the basement. Now, in Adventure Mode on Xbox, since you can't use, like, commands to get can place on properties, you act they actually just go with whatever tool is for the block works. So you can break any wood with an axe, and you can break... I think you can break leaves with sword? Yeah, so that kind of ruins this part, but I didn't know that when I was younger. Now, this is actually a really hard boss fight. This is the boss. You go down here, you step on the pressure plate, and it spawns eight cave spiders to fight you. Ugh. Now, luckily, if you die in this map, there's not really much of a punishment, because keep inventory is on all the time. And, yeah, see, there we go. This is one of the most difficult boss fights in the entire map, and it's right at the start. I mean, I didn't- I wasn't that good at balancing. It should probably be four cave spiders instead of eight, but the way I used to think of it is it's like, it's too easy, I gotta add more stuff. It's still too easy, I still gotta add more stuff. And that was basically the process of how we got to eight cave spiders in here, because I was one time able to beat- Four cave spiders, so clearly, eight cave spiders makes balancing sense. And the normal boss of this area is a giant spider, in case you don't know. So it is game accurate. Now, once you beat the boss, since I didn't know how to make, like, sort of trigger thing, because you can't do that, I just have four levers that you have to flip. And once you flip them all, it opens the exit. Which, that's what that furnace was for. I've now figured it out. So it's... So you can have a little cool slime block exit here that you can't actually see. Now, of course, the slime blocks in this map were all added later. The podzel here was added later. When this was first done, it was just a flat green area. It opens a two-block door in the Deku Tree, and you go in and there's no boss. Yeah, I, I really redid the beginning of this map uh, after they added some new features because I just thought it could be done so much better. And it could. And now it's morning again, and we have finished the intro to the game. That was the first- oh wait, 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 I just realized there was something very important that I forgot back here that did not trigger correctly. There is supposed to be a spiritual stone of the forest granted to you once you beat- Okay, see this chest? You need to grab this. Thank you. Take this stone to the princess in the castle. Now, if you haven't seen Ocarina of Time, spoiler alert, the tree dies once you defeat the spider. So... You get the spiritual stone of the forest. I'm gonna chuck it in this ender chest along with all my rupees because I do not have the inventory space to deal with all this crap. And now we set off into Hyrule Field. Hyrule Field is... I didn't want to use flying there, but oh no, the redstone didn't work again. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. When I built this map, it was a long, long time ago, and redstone has changed a lot since I built it. So there's a very good chance that a lot of the stuff in this map just won't work because of changes or unintentional changes or bugs. See, so like, okay, why did that redstone down there not trigger, but that redstone did trigger? It's things like this that are going to make a lot of the redstone in this map not function correctly. But now here we are on a bridge, which is actually part of the Lost Woods, which we'll see later. And here you meet Saria, or you would meet Saria in Ocarina of Time, but in this adventure map, you just get some signs that tell you when you see a music box, you can play a certain song to open doors or go to the next area. This is my favorite part of the map. This is the coolest feature. Look, a music box. If you play stuff in a jukebox, it opens stuff and it does stuff and stuff changes just like in Ocarina of Time. And the cool thing is, you get different songs. See, this is Saria's song. It's Cat. You get Zelda's Lullaby, which is Malo here, Mall or something. You get the Song of Storms, which is another one. And they're all different values in the comparator, so they all do different things. This map is where I was really experimenting with redstone. And fun fact, do you know... Did, okay, look at when I put that music disc and pop it out again, it remembers the name, right? Did you know that, that was my doing? Because when you used to do that on console edition, it would just pop out a music disc that said music disc, and it would get unrenamed. You would lose the custom name. And 
I was like, that's a really annoying bug. It's ruining my custom map because now you can't tell what song is what. So I reported it on the bug tracker, and in the next release, it actually got fixed. So you can thank me for the reason that music discs stay named after you use them in music boxes. Now, en enable mobs. Okay, see? See? You were supposed to have mobs spawning off in the first area. I was right. Follow the path to the castle, and this is where the game really lets you go free. Now, my adventure map is way, way more open than the original Ocarina of Time. In Ocarina of Time, you basically have to go where you, the game is telling you to go, or else you won't be able to progress. In this, you can go in literally any of the directions, take the dungeons in any order, and do basically whatever you want. And now you really get to see the full sight of the world. That's Kakariko Village with the windmill, Death Mountain up there. We got the, uh, uh, shoot, what do they call this? Castle Town? Then Hyrule Castle, of course. Over there's the Gerudo Valley and the Gerudo Settlement. This is Lon Lon Ranch where you can get Epona. And the cool thing is, this adventure map has a load of side content that is just, like, totally unnecessary, and you can do it for fun. It's wholly optional. Like, there is no point in this map where you have to get Epona. But if you want to, you can go in there and get her. Time to go to the castle. I'm hoping we can get at least to the castle today, or at least I guess we'll be in Castle Town. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in here. Um, it is nighttime and we're getting killed by mobs. This is very frustrating. Please, please get out of here. Now, if you thought the last clip in the video was sort of weird, like it wasn't really synced with my voice and wasn't really synced with what I was doing perfectly, you're actually very good and very observant because that was actually not recorded with my voice. I did that whole take for 10 minutes and talked super excitedly the whole time, and I didn't record the gameplay. See, this is the advantage of recording on PC now. I don't forget stuff like that, but on Xbox, I forget stuff all the time. Now, when you're in this Hyrule Castle Town map here, there's actually a few cool things. For starters, there's elite guards and guards. Now, these guards, I used a very cool secret feature that I made a video on a long time ago that you can equip villagers with thorns. So if you attack a guard, they attack back. And then the Iron Golem, of course, protects the village too, but the villagers themselves are guards, which I think is pretty cool. Over here is just a pot shop. Now, normally in Ocarina of Time, there's some sort of either a mini game or just a bunch of pots you can smash in here. Now, in this version, there's no mini game, and since you're in adventure mode, you can't really smash the pots either, so it's just... You can smash the... <laughs> this is boring. You can smash the pots, though. Cannot smash pots. My life is worthless. These buildings aren't enterable, but you can actually see I made whole interiors in there. There's a bed and a villager and painting and a spider, apparently. We really need to sleep, but there's no beds in this town because I didn't think to put an inn here of all the buildings. We got the target minigame, but we didn't get an inn. <laughs> There's actually a few fun things we can do here. So there's, yeah, the target minigame, the shooting gallery, which I added before, or I mentioned before, I guess. You got a bow already, so I don't need to give you any arrows. And then you shoot the minecart. Very challenging. And then you get the reward, which is a purple rupee. Do you think that was worth 50 rupees? I'm not sure if that was worth 50 rupees, but you know what? Whatever. You see how there's a bunch of dogs back here? That's because dogs spawn at night in this map. That's one of my favorite little tidbit features. It's just mobs, dogs spawn at night because there's a little quest in Ocarina of Time where you have to find a lost dog or something. I don't even remember why I did it. Something else weird about this map that is a later addition that I kind of added just for fun. You can actually trade with certain people in this town who sell different things. Like this guy will trade meat or you can buy meat for emeralds. This guy over here... He sells weapons, so if you want to get a diamond sword early or a diamond axe or something, you can actually buy them from this guy. And then this guy over here sells food, so in case you're running out of steaks, you can buy food from him. I think this is a really cool addition, and it's something that's not actually in Ocarina of Time normally, but I think it fits very well. And then, of course, we've got the Happy Mask Shop, which is very happy because it's got a human head displayed outside of it. In here, we've got the Happy Ma- <laughs> It's- this guy's name is the Happy Mask Salesman. Does this look like a Happy Mask Salesman to you? Anyways, he's surrounded by his fallen enemies, and you can buy different masks here. You've got a Gerudo Mask, a Ganon Mask, a Creeper Mask, or a Stalfos Mask. Can you guess what they all are? I don't think you can. So we're gonna pay 50 rupees, and w get off the chest. Now we're gonna pay 50 rupees to this shop, 
and then we can buy a Ganon mask and a Gerudo mask. There's actually nothing stopping us from just stealing all of the masks, but I think it's playing fair if you actually want to buy the mask. So this is a Gerudo. This is Ganon. I don't know how they have a Ganon head in here, but you know what? Whatever, it's fun. And you can also buy a skeleton head and a creeper head, just because why not? I don't sell human heads here. I don't know why there's one outside. This is the Temple of Time. The Temple of Time is a very important building in this game. It is how you go back and forth from being an adult and being a child in Ocarina of Time. And in this map, it is where you get the Master Sword. Now, you actually need to use a jukebox here. You need to use a song. And if I play... Wow, look, nothing, because I actually know how to do redstone, so you have to play the right song here. The right song is Zelda's Lullaby, but you also have to have the other two spiritual stones before this door will open. This is one of my favorite things, because I worked so hard on making it actually track whether you got all the spiritual stones or not, and then once you do get all three, and you play the song, it opens the door. So that... Oh, wait, 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 there's one more thing we can do before ending this episode, just so we wrap up Castletown. Here's the Bomb Chew Bowling Alley. It's that mini game that's actually really cool. And when you go bowling, now they just give you free bowling balls, and then you hit it. Oh, okay, or you hit the fence. And then you hit the pressure plate, and congratulations, you have just cursed the map to have fireworks exploding in this house until the end of the map. Because these fireworks never, ever ever, 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 ever stop. So every time you come to this town, you get to see faint sparkles and explosions and hear that noise in the background as you come through. It's kind of funny, actually, how easy it is to break out of this map sometimes. Like, I just broke out of the map. I'm not going to do it, though, because I don't want to ruin the immersion. But anyways, that is the end of the first episode. We did Kokiri Forest. We got through the castle town, and we've introduced you to the world of Ocarina Craft. I hope you will join me in the future episodes, but for now, I do want to tell you all, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.